Hello everybody and welcome to Fellowship Games, Dakota here, and I hope you're enjoying this early spring weather like we are in the cold depths of Canada, but it's getting pretty warm. We're pretty excited to uh, get back outside and start going for walks and stuff. But welcome to another deck tech. We noticed that the popper deck techs have been doing pretty well on the channel. Also the uh, one commander one we did. So we'll be making some more commander videos as well. We're back at it again with another popper deck tech. And this is an archetype that I've fallen in love with recently. I play a deck similar to this in standard with Ruin Crab, Teferi's Tutelage as like a passive mill engine. And then you go over the top with like into the story. In Popper, we have watered down versions of this, uh, which we'll get to in a bit. But like I said, I really love this archetype. I tried making this archetype work in years past. It just didn't have the pieces. I think this list is pretty good. And I think it's going to be able to get wins. Actually closing out the mill victories, right? Unlike the standard version of the deck where I win exclusively through milling, this deck struggles, uh, well, struggled in the past to mill out, but I think we solved it and we're going to be able to get uh, some mill victories. So moving to the mill engines, this is how the deck actually wins. So in standard, like we said, we have Ruin Crab and Teferi's Tutelage for passive mill. And the key word there being passive, I think mill decks are at their best when they can mill passively, when they don't have to worry about, you know, playing a card to like mill and then it's like that's it it kind of like doesn't do anything if you can just sit there stick a crab it can block and mills on all of your landfall triggers that's pretty big game and then you know all of our cantrips are gonna also mill their opponent so yeah let's get into them specifically we have iceberg cancrix it's a two mana 04 and whenever another snow permanent enters the battlefield under your control you may have target player put the top two cards of the library into the graveyard so it's whenever another snow permanent so it is a snow permanent so if you have one crab and then you play another crab you will mill two for the crab that just came in but it doesn't mill for itself kind of like the way the old constellation worked, where you know it would come in and it would do a thing by itself so yeah you don't get to mill two right away when it enters the battlefield but you do get to mill two whenever another crab and then you know mill four if you play a third crab so so on and so forth but then you also get to mill for our landfall triggers because we are playing snow basics which we'll get to later not as good as the one mana crabs obviously having only one crab is kind of rough in the deck but there are some bright sides you know like Obviously, it only mills two instead of three, but it mills off of the other crabs. That's pretty nice. And it has four toughness, so it isn't just going to eat a single lightning bolt and, you know, hit the graveyard. This is actually a card from Modern Horizons that the deck needed. Jace's Eraser was the only passive mill engine, but now we finally have another one. Jace's Eraser is sure as hell not a Teferi's tutelage. It was a little awkward in the past because it's only whenever you draw a card, you may have target player put the top card of his or her library. If this was target player puts the top two cards, we'd be goaded. We'd be good to go. What made this deck awkward and why it really needed another mill engine was because every time I can trip, I draw a card, my opponent mills. I'm like at parity, right? Like sure, my opponent's drawing their own cards to help us. They're, you know, they're playing their own cards to help us. But we're like, we're very essentially almost having to like can trip our whole deck to mill their whole deck for the most part. That was definitely a problem, but having these two come together is very nice. And it is a little awkward that they don't curve into each other. You can't go like one mana crab, two mana Jace's Eraser, and then like start going. You kind of have to like, you know, take your time setting up. But that's what the rest of the deck is here to help us out for. We do have some control elements and a lot of very good cantrips. Popper has, I think besides Legacy, probably like the best collection of cantrips. So we get the job done and yeah, we're going to move into what actually makes the deck uh, work. So our card draw, our cantrips, we have four ponders, four preordains, four community knowledge. In standard, we have frantic inventory. This is basically frantic inventory, but if frantic inventory could count your opponent's frantic inventory. So if your opponent is playing a community knowledge, you're going to get even more card draw because it counts theirs, which is pretty nice. And then we have tragic lesson and then we have fathom seer. So ponder preordain, pretty standard stuff. You know, some of the best cantrips like ever printed. A community knowledge, very good, especially if they're also playing community knowledge. We also have Tragic Lesson. This is a card I was pretty high on when it like came out. I was like really thinking this would be good for Popper. And I really like it. Three mana, instant speed, draw two cards, then discard a card unless you return a land you control to its owner's hand. So in this deck, now because of the crab, an element that the deck didn't have previously bouncing your lands is actually a pretty big deal right because you can bounce to your snow covered island play it mill another two cards you're always able to pick up your lonely sandbar for a great utility sure you have to play one on turn one tapped just to make your land drops but then you can bounce it later to cycle it 
that's pretty big game. But yeah, having the utility of picking up your snow basics and then milling is pretty huge. So I really like its inclusion in the deck. And another card I was very high on is Fathom Seer. A two mana one three blocker is pretty good. It's gonna block. It's gonna keep off early aggression and help us stall out. But you can also morph it and then return two lands you control to its owner's hand. And then if it's turn face up, we draw two cards. So this is actually like pretty good. We can like play it on turn three, whatever, right? We have a Jace's Eraser. And then a crab, let's say, also lying around. So, you know, more like turn four, turn five with Fathom Seer. And then, yeah, you flip it. It draws two cards, so you immediately mill two. And then you could, like, bounce a Lonely Sandbar and a Snow Covered Island to your hand. You can play the basic you just bounced. So you play your Snow Covered Island, mill another two with the crab, and then cycle the Lonely Sandbar with that mana, uh, mill another card, which is pretty huge. I really like this card. I might actually play two. I could very reasonably see playing two of these and two Tragic Lessons, doing like a nice little two-two split. But yeah, Fathom Seer and Tragic Lesson, I am very high on. Moving on, we have our interaction. We're a blue deck, so we get to play four Counterspell. That's pretty huge. You have limited amounts of resources, so like as far as interaction so you really want to do proper threat assessment on your opponent's deck like what is actually going to kill you and you have to make sure you have the counter spell for it and then if things do slip through the cracks and we just need to buy time we have two vapor snag as well bouncing something and then you know making them lose one life doesn't really matter too much we can win inside of combat but it's not what we're like actually trying to do and then moving along we have what i call mill cards so these are cards that are mill payoffs like jesus phantasm and then cards that like actually just straight up mill so jesus phantasm is our way to like just win inside of combat once we get our opponent to 10 or more cards in their graveyard it gets plus four plus four so it's a one mana five five flyer this will kill your opponent not even being dramatic if they don't gain any life this will kill them in like the span of four turns yeah it'll get them dead it'll get them dead pretty good it's kind of like the equivalent to relic golem in standard it's a three mana six six that can like tap and mill stuff but it's essentially just to be a butt it's to block it can kill them so yeah we're, we're slamming this one mana five five flyer to hold up the ground but then if we're realizing that for whatever reason we actually can't mill the opponent out like they're too fast and we need to race them we can start getting in the air and close out the game jason's phantasm is a staple of this deck for sure we also have four merfolk secret keeper so for the venture deeper ability is just yeah one mana mill four from the opponent that's pretty huge that's going to increase our mill clock pretty significantly but then we can also pay one mana later and get an 04 for one that's pretty that's pretty sweet we can we can stall up the board pretty well so between like the jason's phantasms the merfolk secret keeper uh the crab also has four toughness we have a lot of ways to just stall out the board like put a lot of toughness on the board and then just sit stall out just sit there hide behind them can't trip mill out that sort of stuff and then to help us get over there like Something I noticed in the mono blue deck in standard is sometimes like you play your cards right, but then your opponent is still top decking pretty good. They're still putting pressure and you're just sitting there going like, okay, I need to win like in the next couple turns, right? And then in standard, that's like into the story with Teferi's Tulich to just like, you know, mill eight cards out of nowhere. Like try and mill them all out in one turn is a big deal. So we're going to have those clutch situations. And for that, I have Mind Sculpt, two mana, mill seven. Seven isn't the most but it's the best we're gonna get in popper for our mana so we have two of those in case we like really need to be aggressive with our milling like we can't sit around and dirtle forever we need to get the milled now and you know we have these to help us close that gap islands you can add some like utility maybe more cycling lands like the deserts like the, the two mana cycling ones and then yeah mana base pretty simple stuff four lonely sandbar let's try gain some life there's like some other utility lands that you can mess around with i'm going for a very cookie cutter mana base like it's going to be very reliable like lonely sandbar we're going to be trying to trying to cycle it as often as possible to get that mill and to dig deeper and then guaranteed have our basics something i will notice though is the duels that came out with Kaldime, specifically the demir one that has the snow typing which is relevant for our deck and the basic land typing so if we could find ways to fetch that out and go for like a blue black splash i think that would be a very very nice upgrade to the deck to the archetype in general right give it a lot more tools to um stay alive better remove better interaction i think that's what you'd gain the most out of black that and then sideboard hate is also very important we have relic of progenitus which we'll get to later but having more sideboard hate would be pretty nice definitely if you're trying to take this archetype to maybe a new a new level and you want to experiment around this archetype maybe look into splashing back black with the uh, new caldine basics 
Kaldine Basic Typing Dual Lands that just came out. Moving on to the sideboard, as you'll see in all my deck techs, the sideboards, I like to keep them simple. So we have three copies of Blue Elemental Blast. These very fast mono red decks are going to be like kind of our toughest matchups. So we want to be able to like, yeah, just destroy all their stuff and counter their stuff for one mana. Very efficient, very good sideboard tech. Graveyard decks are going to be another very big problem for us. Like things that are like trying to utilize Delve and other graveyard payoffs, like using stuff from their uh, graveyard. They have pretty good matchups against us, right? Because we're just fueling their game plan. We're just helping them out. So we really need three relics. Depending on the metagame, like if you're surrounded by a lot of graveyards, like you might need four, but I think three is the safe number for now, right? You can just exile their graveyard. And then it also cantrips, which is pretty nice. So we can start milling them with the Jace's Eraser. Another relatively new card is Fall from Favor. This is just very good. Removal, come in, tap down a thing, and then we become the Monarch. So if we have a Stranglehold on the game and we're shutting down combat, they're not going to be getting in. We have a lot of butts on the battlefield. Being the Monarch and drawing a card every turn that really turbocharges our Jace's Eraser to it's actually milling like two cards per turn and they'll help us like in a lot of matchups. This is a card I would be not surprised if it's found its way into the main deck if I'm being honest. Next up we have two Stormbound guys. Another Resilient Blocker. Um, this is for obviously Flyers, specifically Delver. It can just come in, it can block and trade and then come back to block a future one and then even if they have one piece of removal, it'll just come back with Undying so they would actually need two pieces of removal to get in with their Delver. So yeah, this is very good helps us in that matchup we also have jace's phantasm from that matchup as well it's just a one mana five five so it's going to outclass the delver so we have tools to help us with delvers that are trying to get in combat uh next we have yeah some more goodies we have some more interaction specifically we have dispel for trying if we're trying to win counter wars basically this is going to be help if you know if we're trying to counter something and then with our counter spell, they're counter spelling. This is very efficient. We can counter their counter spell and win the counter war. Kind of see how that plays out in modern. That's kind of one dispel is used um, in modern. And then deprive, just another uh, removal spell. This is one I wouldn't be surprised if it actually made a copy or two made into the main deck as well. Because again, additional cost to cast deprive, you return a landing controller's own hand. That's actually a pretty big upside in our deck. So it depends like the tempo of the game, right? If like returning lands is a big deal then you might not want too many of these effects. But if it's like not that big of a deal at all because all of our threats and interaction are very cheap and we can kind of function off of like four lands, then it's not that big of a deal. We can like bounce the land, replay it, mill, cycle it if it's a lonely sandbar, all that good stuff. And then we have Echoing Truth, single interaction. We can bounce one thing, but if they're going wide with tokens or like they're playing a lot of the same threat, we can just like bounce all of them. And that's a pretty big tempo swing, especially if they're tokens. They're just gone forever. We don't have to worry about it. And then Winds of Rebuke, turn target, non line permanent to its owner's hand. Each player puts the top two cards from his alarm into a graveyard. We don't really care about milling ourselves too much. It's not the end of the world. We can get them two cards fewer in their graveyard while also gaining some tempo. And yeah, that's going to do it for the deck. So like I said, this is an archetype I really like in standard and I want to take it to popper. I messed around with it a couple of years ago. I will say I made this deck before Kaldime was spoiled. And I think the potential for splashing black with the snow duels is actually like pretty big upside. So feel free to get in our discord. Let us know what you think of the deck in the comments, of course, but jump in the discord. And yeah, if you're experimenting with the deck, trying to splash black, want to get my thoughts um, I would love to see your thoughts. Get in there. We have a uh, magic chat that we're trying to build up. Expect more content coming soon. So with all that said, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for being part of the fellowship. See you next time.